those who are watching virtually as well. Although the camera isn't there, is it? Oh, it's there. Okay, it is. Thank you. I was used to seeing it right there, so it's moved a bit. Um, it is so good you all are here, as Mother Barbara and family are all in our hearts and minds. Um, a couple of announcements. Uh, the contemplative liturgy on February 24th is canceled, so we just want everyone to know that. Um, I know Lisa has a, an announcement. Oh, there you are, Lisa. Thank you.
your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and God heard and me by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all that is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen.
bountiful produce to feed the community, and you have multiplied our numbers and brought us joy and laughter as we became brothers and sisters, sharing your love among a diverse community. We are so grateful that every time we think we have seen the best blessing, the Holy Spirit surprises us with another one. Gracious Father, you have given us the most cherished gift, the gift of partnering with you and each other to create your beloved community. We know that there is still much work to do, much need to be answered, and much love to be shared. And so we ask for <coughs> continued blessing on this work, your dream of justice and plenty for our community. May our neighbors find a welcoming family and grace place, and may we continue to be led by your Holy Spirit to answer their needs through the outpouring of love offered there. As we encounter each need, let us meet it with gratitude and thanksgiving to you. For we know you have placed us here to be the love of Christ, and you will make a way. Your love never fails. All that we have belongs to you, O Lord. May we be mindful of all that you have done for us. And may we joyfully and open hands and hearts share your bounty with others. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as come out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all the flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all the earth and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly the psalm of the portion of Psalm 25 as printed in your bulletins. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and according to your mercy. For you have forgiven the iniquity of my fathers. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all the righteous for the unrighteous, 
in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of the dirt of the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is so good that you have all gathered here this morning, both here and present, and of course those who are joining us virtually. Your collective presence, the gathering of prayer, is so deeply important. And I realize that all of you, as well as myself, have been spending much time in reflective prayer, deep prayer, for Bill and Barbara and the Hutchinson family, and all the families of St. Andrew's Church and Grace Place, in fact, all the beloveds who are touched by death and loss and grief. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. It's a time that's all too familiar to us. A time when we actually commemorate the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness. We recall this day how Jesus, right after emerging from the baptismal waters, was spirit-driven, yes, spirit-driven into the wilderness, where he engaged in deliberate danger actually coming face to face with multiple powerful temptations. Thinking about this passage, we 
often focus on Jesus' strength, his courage, his prophetic responses to all of the temptations. This is part of Matthew's version, one that's very familiar to us. Because after every temptation in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus turned to the presence of evil and said, It is written. It is written. It is written, do not rely on bread alone, but on God. It is written, worship only the Lord your God. And it is written, do not test God. We just prayed that. We just prayed that in our Decalogue. Well, Jesus lived these words, spoke these words, as a way to navigate the wilderness through all the temptations. But just for a moment, let's think about Jesus' humanity humanity and how he responded in the wilderness. We can all imagine that he was deeply hungry, how much he must have been hurting. He must have been grieving his community. He was out there alone for 40 days in a hot, dry, cold at night desert. In the brevity of Mark's gospel this morning, it seemed that what sustained Jesus was relying on the assurance, the blessed assurance of the holy word of God. As the psalmist put it in the 23rd Psalm, that he could walk through the shadow of death knowing God is with him. He knew he heard he was beloved by God right after his baptism. And I believe that's our important focus for this morning's gospel and throughout our whole journey through Lent. It's the awareness of belovedness that allowed the holy living word of God to carry Jesus through his trials and tribulations. It was the word spoken. You are my beloved. You are loved. And as our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, wrote and preached, love shows us the way in the most difficult of times. That love is the gospel assurance of belovedness. Our observance this Lent is in actuality a part of our day-to-day -day experiences where we are more aware how deeply connected we all are one to another and to God. And perhaps this day we are spiritually feeling as if we are in the wilderness. Or perhaps we are a place in our journey where wilderness is more in the past than the present. Or perhaps wilderness is something we might even wonder, have we really experienced it or not? Now here at St. Andrews, we are standing at the threshold of Lent, and yet I know it seems as if and starting, instead of walking through the threshold of Lent, we are instead standing at the cross. As if we are somehow emerging from Gethsemane, where we watch and pray and weep. We weep with our dear, beloved rector, Barbara, and the whole family, who are so deeply connected to us that we are all know that we are acquainted with grief and loss. The wilderness is a place of loss and grief, disappointment and regret. It is a deserted place. It is a place where we bump up against our own limitations. We face our own powerlessness. It is a place of risk and vulnerability, uncertainty, and always without guarantees. It's where we realize once again or maybe for the first time, that every day our life hangs in that balance of turning to God or running away from God. For it is in the wilderness where we discover who we are, whose we are, and what really matters. For Jesus, the wilderness, I believe, was the birthplace of his belovedness put into action. That abounding, life-giving love of God literally helped him stop each temptation. And I wonder, do we believe how beloved 
we are. We are God's beloved. And as our Bishop Audrey Scanlon shared in her Friday video, and I hope that you all kind of tune into that Friday video, we are called to open ourselves to God, to look at the brokenness in our lives, and ask God to work with us to create wholeness again and again and again because that's the mission of Jesus Christ. So navigating the wilderness times of our own lives, we discover that love is the way of life. And I realize that our journey into the discovery and embodiment of the love of God is indeed a rocky road. There's no such thing as human life that is completely free of fears, anxieties, insecurities, grief, sadness, or doubts. Remember, even Jesus on the cross, according to Mark and Matthew's version, questioned God's presence with him. As a church, our journey through Lent will lead us definitely to Good Friday with the gift and promise of Easter Sunday. You know, as an old priest doing this for a long time, and I look back at the attendance that used to be on Good Friday, and now in most congregations, not only in this diocese, but across the United States, <coughs> there isn't a filled to capacity standing room only gathering for Good Friday. I wonder why. Right now the question is, how do we live in this liminal space we call Lent as we make our way to Easter? So I don't know how many of you saw the movie, a, movie, a Case for Love, and I hope some of you did, but in that movie there's this amazing invitation for all of the watchers, well actually for all of us, to make a commitment to do an intentional act of unselfish love every day. They even provide a guide that you can even write kind of journal along the way if you Google that. Because as presiding Bishop Michael Curry preached, what would love do? What would love do? Well, I realize that love calls us to be gentle with ourselves, to forgive our own mistakes, to take seriously the Sabbath. Love calls us to be in love with God, to cultivate this deep loving relationship with God, to spend time with God and be still and know that God is God. And when we do that, I warn you, it does mean that the pain and grief of life is often experienced more deeply, but it is the way of love. And I know as a faith-filled community, you know what love can do. Your expressions of love as you care for your beloved rector and family, as you care for your neighbors, as you attend to those who hunger, to those who are in poverty, to children, and to all of God's beloveds who need to experience the grace of God that's offered through this parish and grace place. You live it. So may this Lent help us to continue to focus more and more on the love of God, so that the more we reflect on God's love, the more we can't but help love God more. It always gets us through the wilderness. This is our Lenten action, which is not necessarily giving up or taking on something new, which is, by the way, commendable. But I think our call this day is to fall more deeply in love with God and each other, which gives us strength and courage to manage and go through all the challenges of the wilderness. This is the urgent mes message of the Gospel of Mark, love pouring out from the scripture, Love pouring out from Jesus. Remember what he did. He left the wilderness and got Mark's gospel and went and proclaimed the good news of God. Love pouring out from the angels who even tended to him. Let us remember this day that 
Jesus responded to every destructive temptation with, it is written, it is written, which is the prophetic writing of Isaiah. What did Jesus do? He offered what I would call theological reflection to how and why he resisted temptation. There is a reason that the opening of God's reign in Mark's gospel begins in a most lonely, isolated, barren, and dangerous place. It seems that the wilderness is the place to seek God, find God, building faith strong enough to know that God will make ways in the desert. God will make rivers in the wasteland. And God will provide what we need and fills us up with unbounded love. That was the messianic promise of Isaiah. So dear ones, the wilderness is always there. Sometimes between where we are and where we are called to go. Sometimes we too have to turn, change our course, and sometimes we just need to run straight into the wilderness. Truthfully, there are no shortcuts. If we really want to discover new life that is transformed life of resurrection, that is the promise of everlasting life, all we need to do is remember the voice of God that spoke over Jesus. That same voice speaks over us. You are my child. You are loved as is. You are loved. Jesus actually believed it to be true. It's the way he lived his life. Do we? I close with a poem that I love to share every Lent. It's a poem attributed to Father Pedro Rock. I've been praying this poem for a very long time. The title is Fall in Love. Nothing is more practical than finding God, than falling in love in quite absolute, final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, how you navigate life's most painful challenges, what amazes you with joy and gratitude, and what feeds your soul. So, dear ones, fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide and determine everything. Amen.
the prayers of the people. In this season of repentance and renewal, let us pray for the concerns of the church and the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, renew us. For the whole church of God and for all its members, may the church truly become the united body of Christ, hearing and living out God's call in the world. We pray for all baptized Christians in their ministries, for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, for Audrey Scanlon, our bishop, and for all clergy and other ministries. Lord, in your mercy. For our nation and every nation, may all people learn to live together in peace, respecting one another's differences and autonomy. May all leaders be ever mindful of their responsibilities to their own people and to others in the world. We pray for our president, Congress, courts, state and local officials, and for all leaders around the world. We pray for God's peace and protection to be upon those who are in active duty in our military, Joshua Watkins, Ryan Bain, Anna Murphy, Brooke Calloway, Andrew Harkins, and Kyle Hubert. Lord, in your mercy, for this community and all communities, may we live together in love and harmony, striving for the building up of all members, for wholeness and justice, striving until none are left behind. Lord, in your mercy, for the concerns of the whole world, may those who face natural disaster find grace and relief. May those who face conflict and war find a loving spirit. And may all of us come to treat our neighbors as ourselves so that we and all this world may truly come to be God's new creation. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who are in pain or sorrow, may they come to know your love and care and be brought to wholeness. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, for the poor, the persecuted, and those in prison, for those who are lonely, homeless, or hungry, for all those we now remember, especially Bill, Mother Barbara, Andrew and Philip, Bev, Brandy Brown, Shannon, Ginny W., Danae Pyatt, our presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Marty, Marion and Barbara, Alan and Barbara, Susan, the Peskowski family, Gary and Katie, Anne, Brooklyn, Shayla and James, Betsy, Carol, Joanne, Ken and Melissa, Effie, Luann, Kathleen, Gary, Roseanne, Kathy, Wanda, Brian, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or other adversity. Lord, in your mercy, renew us. For all the blessings of this life, may we truly celebrate the life we have been given and our time with one another for new beginnings, anniversaries, and birthdays. And for all the joys of this life, we thank you for all other thanksgiving we now offer silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, for all who have died, remembering especially Bill. May those who now live in the joy of God's presence find their rest in God's peace. We pray for those who we now name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Renew us. O God, whose desire it is for all people to turn to you and be renewed in your love, grant these prayers in your mercy, and according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Remember, Lord, your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Michael, Audrey, Barbara, Robin, Pat, Wanda, Betsy, Corinda, and Dina, and all who faithfully minister in your church, and particularly our vestry members, Susan, John, Ford, Nicole, Jim, Tracy, Alexander, and Beth, and the members of our Shape by Faith Task Force, Anne, Mother Barbara, Christina, Ford, Keith, Steve, and Susan. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring, to, bring them to the place of eternal joy and life, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Andrew, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as Christ our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the peace.
Let us pray our prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we all cannot receive communion in consecrated bread and wine, we pray that you come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you in our hearts, souls, and minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life, till by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and thy end in peace. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray our post-communion prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with the spiritual presence of the risen Christ. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. I invite us all to bow down before the Lord. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.